Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you new furnace arrays for the new furnace types. The new furnaces, so the blast furnace and the smoker, are able to smelt items twice as fast as the normal furnace. You get the same amount of XP and you also need the same amount of fuel to smelt one item. In case you're familiar with my old furnace array, the new one works quite similar. So it doesn't use any hopper minecarts, it only uses a bit of redstone and hoppers to distribute the items. But you couldn't just replace the old furnaces with the new ones because the item distribution wouldn't be able to keep up. So you need to send an item into the furnace every 5 seconds instead of every 10. Alright, but nevertheless the system still works quite well. Um, here we have the input for the fuel and it distributes all the items equally over the furnaces. As you can see, every item would receive one plank and this is for the items to be smelted. Also again, the furnace array is timed perfectly. So in the moment the first item is smelted, the next one is in. You almost don't see the transition, but it's yeah, perfectly timed. Every exactly 100 ticks you would receive an item. Yeah, so as you can see, once we're done with smelting, also the furnace would turn off immediately. So it's perfectly timed. The furnace array works with any fuel source. For example, I'm using bamboo here, but there's just one caveat. If you have a fuel source that is worse than planks, for example, carpet or slabs, um, and your furnaces are completely out of fuel and they want to refuel it, then the system is not able to distribute it fast enough. But this is a problem pretty much every furnace ray uh, suffers from. As you can see, you only get an item in the fuel slot every 5 seconds and this wouldn't be enough. Uh, this is, yeah, you can't really solve this issue. Pretty much every furnace ray has this issue. But as you can see, you could also use lava instead. So this would also work fine. You can pick up the buckets here also in the output chest. Alright, so this is the smoker furnace array. The one for the blast furnace would look identical. So they yeah, all smelt an item every 100 ticks exactly. You can just replace it with the blast furnace. Uh, so this is the 11 furnace array. You could also double up. So over there I made an example with the blast furnace where the items are distributed to both sides and you can double your yeah, furnace array speed this way. So to sum it up, in case you want to use a fuel source with a low burn time, like bamboo, slabs or carpet, you can use this furnace array, you just need to make sure that it's sufficiently filled up before you put in the items to be smelted. So each furnace has one stack for the inventory slot and additionally two hoppers. So you have 11 stacks of fuel storage per furnace. Alright, so just, yeah, Quick reminder in case you don't know what to use the blast furnace and smoker for. The time I'm making this video, they were just added two days ago. You can use the smoker in order to cook food. So that means raw meat, fish and also potatoes and kelp. And then you can use the blast furnace to smelt ores and also weapons, armor and horse armor. Unfortunately, you still need to use the furnace with the normal smelt speed for cactus, logs for charcoal, chorus fruit, sponges, sea pickles, terracotta, then all the stone types, so cobble into stone, uh, stone bricks into cracked stone bricks, etc. Uh, Nazarek into nether brick and clay into bricks. So my opinion, the new furnace types are probably mostly useful for early to mid game. Once you're in late game and you have a gold and an iron farm, there's really no reason to smelt ores anymore. The only reason I see maybe for the blast furnace would be to smelt the swords of a zombie pigment farm. Uh, same for the smoker, usually at the end you have a chicken farm that produces cooked chicken or steak directly. But at least you can use the smoker in case you want to use um, yeah, kelp for either fuel or as a building block. So that's a quite nice use in case you need a ton of kelp and I would recommend to use the smoker. I also added an option that makes it possible to collect the XP from the furnace. So since Minecraft 1.13, hoppers store the amount of XP even if the items were sucked out. 
But in order to take out the XP, you still need to take out the item manually. So you can just lock the hopper below and then you get the XP. And you can unlock it again um, and so on. I would only recommend to only lock uh, a single hopper at once because all the hoppers below the furnaces would feed directly into this chest. So you would permanently block all the other hoppers that feed into the chest if you lock, for example, this hopper permanently. So only really use those levers in case you want to collect the items directly. I also fixed an issue with the old furnace array in case the fuel is completely filled up and then you use the furnace to smelt items. The hopper in the back was permanently locked and it couldn't put in new fuel into the furnace. So that's why I just added an additional hopper here in the back for the fuel slot. So we would only lock this hopper, but the hopper below would never be locked and is able to yeah, put in new items into the furnace. All right, then just to answer a lot of questions that I had with the old furnace array, you can use the furnace array to smelt different item types. But this is no problem at all, the furnace array can handle that. You would get a new item exactly in the right moment, so there would never be a, um, a pileup of items in your furnace. So here's a quick tutorial showing you how you can build the new furnace array types. So you need 11 smokers or blast furnaces. 11, then put hoppers directly on top, feeding into the furnace. Then we need sideways hoppers, distributing the items here on top. So here you need additional hopper more, because this also will get locked. Then the back for the fuel slot, hoppers pointing into it. Then downwards facing hoppers, in order to avoid the issue with the stuck items. And then also a line of hoppers pointing to the side and one additional one as well. All right, then the redstone is not much. So we just need a block here directly in front of the hopper, comparator pointing into a block, dust, another block here, then a repeater. Then two blocks, redstone dust on top, then we go down, two more redstone dust there. Here, two blocks again, dust, repeater on three ticks, points into a block, also a block here, and a block there, preventing the redstone lines from connecting. Then one, two, three, four blocks with redstone dust on top. Then we go down again. You would go up, but you can already add a block in order to prevent the lines from connecting. And here we do the same, dust here, and repeater on four ticks, maximum delay, and a block here. And now everything is powered, also the additional hopper here in the back. All right, then we also need to lock the hoppers below. That's going to be quite simple. Just blocks and redstone dust on top. And then a torch here, powering everything. All right, now for the fuel input line. Here we need a comparator directly next to the hopper. Then dust repeater. And then we add redstone dust here on the side. Here we go over, but we prevent the lines from connecting again. And here we have a repeater on three ticks. Okay, then here we add additional blocks of redstone dust. And now we need to power this hopper alone, uh, so we can't use any blocks here that would get powered. So that's why we have to use the repeaters that would point into the blocks. I don't see a way around this. So every hopper gets a repeater and then dust in the back. And then we just add a torch here. One little correction, I made the mistake myself. One additional hopper here needs to be powered, otherwise the first furnace would get double the amount of items. So now we just need to add hoppers below the furnaces. It will all bring the items to a chest. And we can also add blocks here. And 
Yeah, here would be the blocks you can stand on. And then you can attach levers on the side of those blocks in order to power the hoppers in the back. To prevent the items from getting sucked out of the hopper. Alright, then we just need to add chests in order to put in the items. So here we can go over, add a chest here. And here we need to go over an additional block because otherwise this hopper would get powered. So then we can add chests here on the top. Alright, um, yeah, and then you can fill it up as I did with the other furnace in order to add decorations. Uh, one popular mistake a lot of people made with the old furnace array would be to fill up this space here and put a full block that can be powered here on the side. You shouldn't do that. So here I put actually a stair there, which also works fine as a decoration. So it's really important that you don't put a full block there because this <laughs> yeah breaks the furnace array. So let's also take a look at the furnace array that can smelt the items twice as fast. So the normal version is capable of smelting 7920 items per hour and this one will be 15840. So it's perfectly symmetrical. You only had to find a way in order to access the chest somehow that it would distribute the items. Uh, so that's why I had to put the fuel input one block higher so the hoppers wouldn't uh, interact somehow. But apart from that, it works exactly the same. So the lower slot is for the items to be smelted. Actually, I prepared some here. This would be the back fuel input. Let's put in some planks, and that's for the ore. So I think all 22 blast furnaces will turn on at the same time. Yep, that's pretty cool. And here in the chest in the middle, you can take out your smelted items. Alright, you can also find a world download in the video description in case you want to check exactly how the large furnace ray is built. But thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye!